Hey everyone, it's great to see you again. Why don't you join with us now as we worship God together. Hey church, this is the part of the service where we are going to come around communion. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, the first just part of of that particular scripture, it says these words. It says, For I pass on to you what I have received from the Lord himself. 
And on the night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and he gave thanks to God for it. And then he broke it into pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And this morning, as we take communion, I want you to take your piece of bread or your cracker or, or whatever you have this morning. And we're going to take this piece of bread or whatever it is, and we're going to thank God that he gave himself, that his body was broken so that ultimately we could spend eternity with him. And then we're going to pray together. God, we want to thank you this morning for the gift of your son and father for his body that was broken so that we could be made whole and father I pray that Lord Jesus as we take these emblems this morning that God that they won't just be something that we do out of a religious act but father that they will be a reality of our lives that God that we put our faith and our hope and our trust in you because of what you did on the cross so thank you for your body that was broken for us in Jesus name amen the second part of communion is not only his body that was broken, but the uh, f fundamental part was the blood that was shed. Jesus' blood, it cleanses us from all sin. There had to be shed blood so that ultimately, as I've already said, that we could be together with him in heaven. Paul goes on to write in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, in verse 25, it says these words. It says, in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant between God and his people on an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this to remember me as often as you drink it. I'm so glad this morning that we don't have to drink real blood, but we are drinking just some juice this morning that is a representation of what Jesus did, that his blood was shed just like before in the Passover meal, that there was blood that was uh, shed by the lamb that where they had to take it to the priest and the priest would sacrifice it on behalf of the people. That no longer needs to happen. That now that we can come before God as spotless people and we remember this by his blood that was shed that stopped everything else, that that was the, the moment in the line, a line in the sand, so to speak, where Jesus said, this is it. It's me and nothing else. So we're going to take this juice this morning and we're going to remember his blood that was shed. So Father, we thank you for your blood. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we don't have to do anything other than come to you this morning in our frailty, Father, in our weakness, Father, and we give it over to you. And Father, we thank you that, Lord Jesus, that we can come before you this morning with all the stuff and all the baggage in our lives and say, Father, cleanse us by your mighty power, by your Holy Spirit, by the blood of the Lamb. And Lord Jesus, we pray that God, as we have taken communion this morning, that Lord Jesus, that we will never ever let it just become something extra that we do. But God, I thank you that Lord Jesus, that we get to remember you and what you did on the cross all those years ago. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. So feel Lord. Every breath, every moment is for you, Lord. Come on, we're gonna sing this together. You give life. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the dark. Store every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. You give life, you give life, you are love, you bring light to the dark. Restore every heart that is. 
is broken. Oh, great are you, Lord. Sing together, it's your breath. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out.
cry these bones will sing we'll great are you Lord come on one more time we sing all the air and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing we'll great Robin, what have you been up to? Doing the toilet. Doing the toilet. Have you been playing with anyone? Who have you been playing with? Toy and the man. Toy and man. Good job. In the garden. In the garden. Well, we miss you lots and we can't wait to see you all and soon. No, no, they're in the garden. And Isaac's amazing and he's yeah. getting really big. I hope you all enjoy in the uh, baby I stand. I'm in the car. You've been on the potty, yes. We're, we're all growing up quickly over here. Do, do. But See, we love you and we miss you do, do, do. and we're looking forward to seeing you. Good job. Poo -poo's and wee -wees. We're looking forward to seeing you. It's a bit manic over here, but we love you guys. Bye. Bye. Good morning, Life Church. Good morning, everyone. It's Avril here. I hope everyone is well. I'm well, thank you. Numbers chapter 6 from verse 24 says. May the Lord bless and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favour and give you his peace. Take care. Stay safe. Bye. Massive hello to our lovely church family. Hope you've been coping well during lockdown. Can't wait to see you all again soon. We've been loving online church on a Sunday, so thanks for all the hard work being put in with it. And we can't wait to see you all soon. Today we've uh, been part of a VE celebration in the street, which was fantastic. But we can't wait to celebrate with you all our victory in Christ. So from the three of us, bye. 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 Well, church, what a great time of worship that was. And once again, on behalf of uh, the wider church, creative team, you are doing an incredible job and we love you and we thank you for everything that you're doing. So once again, I have been given the incredible task of giving you the notices this morning here at Live Church. 
You know, the first thing is this, is that at 10 o'clock every Sunday, it happened before the service this morning, from 10 till 20 past, we have an online foyer. That is somewhere where you can go on Zoom and you can meet with other people that are part of church. You can have your coffee in your hand or your tea or your milk or whatever you want. And you can go on there and you can chat to people. And our hosts in there, Carl and Ali, they will make you feel welcome. And uh, that is just a great time. That is from 10 until 20 past 10 every Sunday in the online foyer. You know, something else that we have going on here is our kids team are doing a great job. Hal, our kids pastor, is doing an incredible job and there is always online content for you guys, for your kids on our YouTube channel. Uh, also, what's happening today, after today's service, Hal is having a Zoom call with all of our kids. Parents, you should have had the um, the notification with the Zoom code, the ID code for that, and uh, hopefully you will have had that, and you can put your kids on Zoom, and Hal, I don't know how he's gonna do it, but he is going to talk to your kids on Zoom. That is, it just sounds carnage, but I think it's gonna be brilliant, and that will be amazing. Also, for our 11s to 18s, all the way through the week, there's loads of stuff going on for our young people, and Luke and the team are doing an incredible job of doing that, so make sure parents and young people, if if you haven't engaged yet with everything online, with the online con uh, online content, with regards to our youth and everything that's happening there, Zoom calls and uh, devotions and all that kind of thing on Instagram Live, uh, make sure that you get involved in that and, uh, and that will be amazing. Hey, we're going to come around the Word of God. Week two of our new series, Hearing from God, and Luke is now going to come and he's going to take us through the Word. Get your notepads ready, get your pens poised, and I know that God is going to speak to you this morning. Hey church, it's so good to see you with us today um, and I'm really excited and honoured to be able to share the next part of our Hearing from God series where we're going to be continuing on from what Aaron spoke last week about hearing God through the Holy Spirit and today we're going to speak about hearing God through the Word. See, I fully believe that the Word of God is alive. I believe that this book is relevant. I believe that it can help us every single day live the life that God has called us to live. And I don't know where you are on your faith journey. I don't know whether you're new to church, you're new to this, you've been sent the link and you don't even know who Jesus is. You don't, you, you all you know about the Bible is it's an, it's an old book that, that sits in the top drawer of a hotel room sometimes. Or maybe you're a Christian, maybe you love the book, maybe you read it every single day, maybe it is your lifeblood. Or maybe you find yourself somewhere in the middle where you believe in God, you're a Christian, but if you're being honest, like, and actually like so many, this is a difficult book to understand and this is a difficult book to read and it can be difficult to, to, to get in it every single day and you can hear people say, read the Bible, read the Bible and you're like, that's great, how? How do I do it? Well, my prayer today is not only will hopefully the Bible come alive to you, but you will be equipped in exactly how you can read it and you can get the most from it. So let's pray together before we get into, into what I want to say today. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this morning. God, we thank you for what you've already done, Lord, through the worship, through the prayer. And Lord, as we open up the, the scriptures, Lord, as we open up your word, I pray, Lord, that you would speak to us. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to every person right now, wherever they are. Lord, that we, we invite you to speak to us now, Lord, to, to, to change us, Lord. And we invite you, Lord, to meet with us right now. In Jesus' name, amen. So I want to go really practical today as I said. So let's just really kick off this morning by looking at what actually is the Bible. Because as I said, we've got different people watching, maybe at different stages of life. Well, let's just really, really start at the very beginning. Well, the, the Bible is one of the most influential books in history. It's inspired all areas of society, from literature to art, to, to entertainment, to, to, to all kinds of living. It is 611,000 words long, which is a lot, but actually a lot less than a lot of fiction books that are out there, like the Harry Potter series or whatever it may be. It's written by more than 40 different authors, different people from diverse backgrounds and different occupations. It was written over a time span of over 15 centuries. In total, there are 66 books, 39 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament. Did you know the Bible is still the world's best-selling book with over 100 million copies every single year, which is crazy. 
And although many people can get them, get them for free through different charities, or as I said, you can uh, get one in a hotel room, well, that's often what happens because it is the most stolen book in the world, which I think is hilarious in itself. The, the Bible covers topics as to who we are, why we are here on earth, what life is all about, how we can live the best life that we can. I don't know about you, but I've never heard the audible voice of God. I've never heard a big booming voice down, but I can tell you this. There is time after time, highlight after highlight, note after note in this Bible where God has spoken to me through his word. See, 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 says this, All scripture is God inspired. It is from God, written by man, but from God, and is useful to teach us what is true and to help us realise what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us what to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. That is the Bible. It is the word of God. But how does it work today? Because many of it is over 2,000 years old. And you might be sitting here thinking, that's great, but it's kind of irrelevant. It's really old. But what does it look like for you and I today to hear God through the Bible? And if we're being honest, what is it even all about. You can turn to a book or a page and it doesn't really make much sense. So I just want to really quickly just take you through a bit of a whistle-stop tour of what the Bible is actually all about. Starts of creation, God creating man and woman, but we, we fall. We go our own way, we choose our way over God's way. But God rises up a chosen community, the people of Israel, Israel, who are invited to live God's way and it starts with Abraham who is promised to be the father of many. Israel then finds itself in Egypt. They then get their own land, the promised land and their own kingdom and they build a temple and they worship God. But then again they get, they choose their own way, they go into exile but then they return and they build a second temple and humanity is in need of a saviour. People are needed to be united back to God, but following the law, following the, some of the things of the Old Testament isn't enough. So we read Jesus' birth, his ministry, his death, but his resurrection. He defeated darkness and, and has let God's people meet their father once again. We see the growth of the early church. We see the spread of the good news throughout the world, the good news of Jesus. And then we have letters written to different communities, instructing them to live the Jesus way. But the book doesn't finish there. We're then left, Revelation, with an image of a future day that will one day come. A future day where all the wrongs are right, where evil is defeated forever. And heaven and earth exist as one. And you and I live in perfect community with God. And there's a lot more in between, but there is a bit of an overview. But if I had to summarise it, the Bible leaves us with two options. And, and the whole of the Bible can be really summarised with, do we want to live God's way? which is with his promise of his presence, of his joy, of his peace, and knowing that he's with us, directing us, protecting us, guiding us? Or do we want to live our way, where there is fear, there is worry, there is, there is pain, there is disappointment, there is an absence of God? And throughout the Bible, humanity, like today, finds itself torn between what God's way and our way. God's way and our way. Following God, going against, going our way, repenting, coming back to God. And throughout the Bible, that is the story we find ourselves in. And this is a story of humanity today where we are torn between going God's way and going our way. But the one thing that the book is all about, the whole of the book, is about Jesus. The Old Testament is pointing towards him, prophesying of his saviour that's going to come. The New Testament speaks about what he does on earth, the difference that he makes. And then it continues with the difference that his name and his followers are making throughout the earth. And that is the Bible. But we need to understand this is not a normal book. These aren't just words on a page. It is the living word of God. It is described as the, as the living word of God. And it's important to understand what the Bible actually says about the Bible. See, Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, For the, the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged edged sword. Psalm 119 verse 9 says, How can a person stay pure by obeying your word? See, it corrects us. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. If you're looking for direction today, for help and support, then the word is the place to get it. 
And Isaiah 40 verse 8 says this, the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of God stands forever. So now we know roughly what it's about and we know what it says and we understand what it is. We can still be honest and say that it's still difficult to get into it sometimes. It can still be difficult to spend time reading it, to to study it, to understand it. So this morning I wanted to put out a few reasons of why we should be reading the word and then really help you and equip you of how we can hear God through it. And the reason why I say that is because it's more than just reading. So you can read a book and get nothing from it, a, a great time maybe, but there's something about the Bible that when you read it, God can speak. Even though this book was written 2,000 years ago and older, it's a book that was written to different people sometimes in in a different context, in a different society. When the world is looking different, the word still remains true. And amazingly, when we read it, God can speak to us. The main way that I hear hear from God is by the word of God. And the reason why is this, I want to just unpack two things to you really quickly. They can sound confusing, but I want to break them down. The first one is Logos, and the second one is Rima. See, the Bible uses two different types of Greek words in order to refer to the Word of God. So we say we can hear God through the Word, and you might think literally the Bible, but there's actually two ways of doing that. And I really hope that as we go deeper in this, that you can understand the difference in these words can help us understand how God can speak to us through them. So the first one is this, the Logos way. This refers to the constant written word of God, the Bible. The Bible that doesn't change. It might have a different cover. It might have a slightly different twinge on language, whether it's the message translation, for example. But the word of God will not change. How incredible is it that the creator of the heavens and the earth The God that spoke the stars into the sky has spoken to you and I and we have it in our hands. That blows me away. This is the word of God. The God that created you and me has written to us and we have it in paper and we're able to read it. That is just incredible. But through the written word of God, the Logos word, we learn about God. We learn about his ways, his character. We can learn about God objectively. We can go further into knowing him on a personal level and experience him, but that comes when the rhema word of God comes in as well. So the rhema God is a lesser known Greek word, which is used for the word of God and refers to the instant or the way that God speaks to us through it. For example, you can read a piece of scripture and maybe read it literally. I can read a piece of scripture in a different moment, in a different context, in a different need and feel God speak to me like never before. There has been time after time where I've read, the, I read a passage and, and, and maybe nothing. And then I've read it a couple of days or a week or a year or sometime later and all of a sudden I'm like, how did I never see this before? Well, that's the difference from reading the Logos and reading it with the Rhema. See, our God is not silent. He is a speaking God and wants to communicate to us today. Not only through his writings, but through speaking to us directly, which we're going to unpack over the next few weeks. When we can put the Logos and the Rhema word together, and when we can use the Logos word, the written Bible, and allow his Rhema word to speak to our spirit, that is when the word of God comes alive. And my prayer today is that as we unpack this, that the word of God will come alive to you and it will help you, guide you and support you as you read it. The Logos word is when the written word of God meets with the rhema, which is when the Holy Spirit uses it and speaks to us. Like Aaron said last week, everything starts with the Holy Spirit speaking to us. So that is what we are talking about today. So here's just a few reasons of why I believe you should read the Bible. They're going to come up on the screen next to me. uh, And uh, your homework is to actually go away and read the passage. I'm not going to read it out to you this morning, but I want you to go away and read them and study them and understand why it's so important for us as Christians to live by the word of God. Here they go. The first one is it provides nourishment for your soul. Matthew 4 verse 4, John 6 verse 63. It shows us how to live right. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 to 17. It keeps us from wrong. Psalm 119, verse, 100 and, oh, sorry, verse 11, sorry. It guides us. Psalm 119, verse 105. It grows our faith. Romans 10, verse 17. 
It fills us with hope. Romans 15 verse 4. It fills us with joy. Psalm 119 verse 47. It fills us with peace. Psalm 119 verse 165. It contains the power to overcome. Matthew 4 verse 1 to 11. And it is full of God's promises for you and me. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6. The Bible has power and God can speak to us through it. Sometimes, if I can be really honest with you this morning, church, we just need to pick it up and to dive in and believe that when we open it, that God is going to speak to us. So this morning, as I said, a little bit differently, I want to unpack some really practical ways that you can read the Bible, go deeper in it and ultimately hear God through it. Because as amazing as this is when we get to preach to you, it's for, it's for a few minutes on a Sunday. But if you can learn to do this every single day, you're going to experience God in a way like never before. So practically, this is some of the things that I do. Pray. Always pray before you read the word. And that takes the Logos, the written word of God, pow- partners it with the Holy Spirit, the Rhema word of God. And that's where the encounter can happen. So sometimes it's just really simple. God, I pray that you would speak to me today. And, and I, I, trust me, church, he will do that. The second one is actually do more than just read it. See, the Bible is great, but actually it has to be more than words on a page. It has to be things that we live by. If God promises that he's never going to leave us nor forsake us, then let's live by these words rather than them just being great things that we post on Instagram. Stay fresh. As exciting as the Bible is, talking about crazy subjects, actually staying fresh can be an issue for many believers. So why not change up the translation that you're using? Read a study Bible. Why not watch a video about it? I personally have just bought a new Bible because I want to I see fresh parts of it. I don't want to just see the old things that I've highlighted. I want to see the new things. So I've just bought a fresh Bible that actually helps me to see things new. You might be saying, well, where do I start? A great place to start, start in John. John speaks about Jesus more than any other gospel. It tells us uh, all about all he did. Mark is the chronological order. It tells us about what Jesus did step by step. Maybe it's Luke. Maybe you're a facts man. Hey, is this Jesus even real? Well, read Luke. Luke is a doctor and he detailed factually correct, accurately what Jesus did. The next bit, read a bit every day. Let consistency build good habits inside. Maybe you might want to start with just the verse of the day on the version app, which is a great way to do it. Or maybe you want to start in John and just say, I'm just going to read a couple of verses each day. But as you do it each day, it becomes a habit in your life and you realise how much you need it. Be open when you read it. It's God's word, not ours. There's times when I read the Bible and it highlights things in my life that I need to change, that I need to do differently. It's because it's God's word instructing me to live his way. So let's be open as we read it. Let's not come with preconceived ideas of who God is or what he's about, but let's let the word speak to us. Have a plan. I follow a a Bible plan. I I read the Bible in one year. It takes me no more than 15 minutes a day. But without a plan, even I can find it really difficult to know where to go. So why not get a plan? Why not do it with someone? Don't necessarily feel you've got to read from cover to cover, as great as the book is. And I do encourage you to read it cover to cover. Me and a few people did the Bible in 30 days in January, where we go from cover to cover. And I encourage you to do that at some point. But don't necessarily start with that. If that's your first point, then, then as I said, start in a book like John. Don't do it alone encourage each other get a few people read uh, some scriptures together i know in our young adults connect group we've got people that are doing the plans together and they talk about it and what about this what about that well i don't understand this maybe you can help me with that it's so helpful not doing it alone a few more color away right in it i've got i've got things that i can take you to verses where god spoke to me about a specific time a specific moment and i can remember that and see how god spoke to me and it encourages me that god is going to speak to me again so as beautiful and holy as this book is make it yours color it write in it make it yours don't beat yourself up hey if you miss a day if, if, if you don't quite get into it don't beat yourself up about it God wants you to be in relationship with him, not become legal about reading the Bible. The audio version, maybe it's easier for you to listen. Well, why not listen to it? Listen to the audio version and let it help you. And the Bible Project, I recommend these guys so much on YouTube and they've got just so many resources that can help us understand the Bible more. But most of all, church, let me encourage you, if you want to hear God, read the word. 
is how God is going to speak to you. That's, and what better time? We're in lockdown. We have time. Why not turn Netflix off for a moment? Why not go make a cup of tea in the sun and read the word and let God's word speak to you? I believe that the Bible is alive, that it is powerful, it is food for our soul, and that as a church, if we can get into his word in this time, that we're going to hear God like never before. So church, get into his word in this season. And I believe, I really do believe that God is going to speak to you. And maybe for the first time, you're going to hear God, even today, this week, as you get into his word. Because I believe with all of my heart that when you make space for God, that he comes. That when you seek God, that you will find him. And maybe that's you in this season. Maybe you find yourself at the moment looking for God, wondering where he is, looking for answers. Maybe you're overwhelmed with fear and worry at the moment. And and I'm speaking about this God who speaks to us, who promises to never leave us, to to guide us, to bring joy and peace. I believe that you can find that right now. And I believe, as it says in Romans 10 verse 9, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, if you believe in your heart that you raised him from the dead, that you will be saved. That this morning you haven't got to get your life right, but instead you just need to say, Jesus, come into my life. And I believe that Jesus will meet you exactly where you are and will meet you this morning and you can have a personal relationship with him. So if that's you, maybe for the first time or maybe as a recommitment, you want to get your life right with Jesus right now. I'm going to invite everybody to close their eyes. And if that's you, I want you to say this prayer after me. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe that you are the son of God and that you have taken away my sin and my shame. This morning I put my trust in you and I ask you to come into my life. I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done, but today I choose to follow you. Amen. Amen. Hey, if that was you, then you've just prayed one of the greatest prayers you'll ever pray. And I want to encourage you to, in the chat just next to us, click that raise a hand button and we would love to connect with you, love to pray with you and love to make sure that you've got all that you need to to hear God through his word and to walk out this journey of faith. Church, we miss you. We cannot wait till we're back together. But get into his word this week and I believe that he's going to speak to you. Stay safe and we'll see you soon. God bless. Hey church, we don't just worship God with our our singing or our raising of our hands or our clapping. We also worship God through our giving. And I personally want to say thank you for every single one of you that has partnered with us and consistently and continues to give into the life of the church at this time. And I want to thank you and say keep going because your giving is making such a difference in the hearts and the lives of the people that are receiving what we are putting out. So at this time, this is the time where you can worship God through your offering. You can see that on the screen below you is a small giving tab. If you click on that, that is where you can give this morning. And I know that as you give, you will be blessed, but only not only that, that the church will be blessed as well. Thank you, church. Hey Church, what a great Sunday we've had. Thank you so much for joining us. And make sure you stay connected through the week. There's so much going on for you to be involved in. And I really pray that you're going to hear God this week for his word. Have a great week. We miss you. Take care. See you soon.